this is going to be a very basic build guide. And what I mean by that is I'm doing these Guardian Academy videos, especially for new players. Now, I'm going to do those as, as beginner, intermediate, and advanced topics. I will do a more advanced and intermediate topic on build crafting. And in fact, I have other builds on my channel and other videos on how to make builds if that is of interest to you. But this video is specifically going to be for beginners. So if that's not you, this probably isn't a video for you. Or it is possible that there may be some things, even though you are decent at build crafting, there are maybe some things that you've kind of forgotten and maybe you're a refresher on. So I will put chapters in this video so that it can be of value to a lot of different people. So first off, most build crafting, you can do a lot of things with weapons, but for the most part, build crafting is around your armor and your stats. And it's to, in many cases, to make you more survivable, to get your supers back faster, to use abilities in certain ways. Weapons do play a role in this, but not as much as armor. So let's first talk about some of your stats in question. So first off, let's talk about your stats. And I'm going into my inventory screen here, and you'll notice, obviously you have a series stats, just like in any RPG game. First off, I have mobility. Mobility, for the most part, increases your movement speed and maximum jump height. Now, since I'm on a hunter, it also reduces your class ability, which in this case is your dodge. So each character class has a particular stat that will reduce their class ability. And so sometimes building into this can be, first off, it kind of builds the fantasy of the class, but second, can allow you to get chain those abilities and get them quicker. Next, let's talk about resilience. Resilience is the number one most critical stat as far as survivability in the game now. So what this does is, it re depending on what stat you're at, and you see here I'm at Resilience Tier 8. And again, if I didn't talk about it earlier, your number of points that you have between 0 to 100 puts you into tier. Since I have 89, I'm in Tier 8. That gives me 26% damage reduction. That means for every piece of damage coming in, it's reduced by 26%. If you go to 100, then you can usually 40% reduction in damage coming in so if you're playing pve activities this is absolutely the number one stat you want to work on on your characters next we're going to talk about recovery recovery is the stat that it basically allows you to regenerate your shield faster so if you get hit in battle and you want to regen your shield and you've seen that in games like halo and obviously destiny that allows you to gain it back quicker now with resilience being so important now this is not as important as it used to be, but it can be helpful because if you get hit, you will recover your shield faster. Obviously, being resilient stops you from getting hit to begin with. So again, you have to balance the two out. And you only have so many points with so many mods you can use, so you have to kind of think through that. The one thing I did mention earlier is that resilience is how you regen your class ability on your Titan, and recovery is the same thing on your Warlock. So these first three are basically the other thing, depending on your subclass and what class you're using, they're going to allow you to get your class ability back quicker. Next is gonna be discipline. Discipline is really how long it takes your cooldown of your grenades. You'll see here, I'm at tier three, pretty low. It's gonna take me two minutes outside of doing other things, build crafting, to get my grenade back. So again, this is useful because you may wanna do grenade builds. And if you're doing that, you may have to think about if you wanna spec this out a little bit higher. Next, we're gonna talk about intellect. Intellect is how fast you get your supers back. And you'll notice based on where I'm at, it's obviously, it takes multiple minutes for me to generate my super. If I increase this, then I'll get my super back quicker. Pretty simple stat. Then finally, we're gonna talk about strength. Strength is how you get your melee ba back. And again, it depends on what you're doing in your character. You may not use your melee very often. So for instance, Warlocks, depending on what subclass you're on, if you're Arc, you're not gonna use that as much. But if you're on a Titan, you may use that a lot. So again, Specking into this will allow you to get your ability. And in this case, you see I get my melee ability back outside doing other things with builds in 25 seconds. So again, just aside, when you do your builds, you really have to think about how do these things dovetail together? What are the most important things depending on the activity I'm looking at? What are those and what do I want to spec in? Because you do have a limited amount of points depending on the armor you have and the mods you're using that you can use across your character. Next, we could talk about mods. So mods have an entire area here um, under the collections. And you'll notice that we have uh, mods that are your basic mods that kind of go on your head, arms, chest, legs, or class. 
You have some general mods, some combat style mods, and then if you get into raids and things like that, you'll get mods as well. So let's talk about your general mods. You'll see your general mods are things where you can increase your discipline, you can increase intellect, you'll see there's a minor and a major, and you'll see there's a cost. You also see, you see here, these can fit into any piece of armor. I'll go into in a little bit what that means here in a second. But you'll see it costs these many points to slot those mods. If we go back to the inventory screen, you'll see, so let's say I, I look at this particular piece of uh, equipment I have. You'll see up here, let me go into this, you'll see that this has 10 energy because I've completely maxed this out. I basically masterwork this piece of armor. So in this case, I have 10 energy. So you'll see I have two here for a minor recovery mod. I have some other mods and I have this one. These total into eight and you'll see I have two unused. So I could I could potentially like, like here, this one's at two. Well, let's say I wanna move this up to this better recovery. Now I've used all my points, but I've also increased this ability a little bit. So. One thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get armor is once you get a really good set of armor, you can do master work and get upping this all the way to 10, that will give you more points that you can get to slot the mods, again, to those mod cots I talked about in the previous screen. So now let's go back and let's go to the mod area again. And you can see, like I said, your general mods here are the ones that you can do to basically increase what your stats are now one thing to keep in mind to get mods let's talk about how you get mods for general mods you're going to get those from legendary ingrams and you can get legendary in a variety of different ways right if you have a lot of shards you can buy those from a hole if you play activities and do you know like if you go to shacks you turn in bounties turn so many bounties you'll get a free one there you'll get prime ingrams any activity gives you basically legendary ingrams of some sort will give you a chance of getting mods. So if you don't have mods, you'll notice I have a lot of these here. That's how you're going to do them. So just play the game, you know, turn in bounties again to, you know, at each of the vendors. Um, also, as you level up a rank on a vendor, so vendors have ranks. And as you play the activity, let's say you decide to really go in hard on strikes, then that's what's going to allow you to get these particular mods. And again, when I say these particular mods, I'm talking about anything these standard sort of mods, like you see in here, not combat style, but any of these standard mods here, that's how you're gonna get them. And obviously there's a lot of mods, so some of those can take you a little bit longer. Now, you'll notice you also have combat style mods. Some of these will say, you'll notice this one says, when you become charged with light, you can do certain things. Those are charged with light mods. And you'll see here, it says charged with light mod. You'll also notice war mine cell mods. You'll also notice in addition to that, Elemental Well mods. Those are the three primary type of combat style mods. Those mods you get either in a season, so sometimes those come out in a season where you can pick them up. There's another way to get them. You go over, if you look in the tower, you have a vendor named Ada, which we'll head over here in a second. Let's just fast travel over to Ada real quick so we can look through that. Ada on a weekly, or actually on a daily basis, sells a different set of mods that rotate. Sometimes if some of them are very rare, because some of them only come by like once a year, once every other year. So again, some of them are more rare than others. So I, on my channel, sometimes I will post videos when really rare occurrences of mods show up. But again, outside of seasons, this is the primary place that you get mods. And you can see here, right now I already own these, but if I wanted to, I could purchase mods for Glimmer. And again, if you're missing some, that's why every day you're gonna to wanna to show up, come in here and see if she has something that you're missing for a particular build that you're looking for. In addition, on your seasonal artifact, you also have temporary mods that can be used. These are for particular seasons. These are usually, again, some of these are gonna be things like uh, mods that you have for dealing with champions. Again, we'll go into that a little bit here in a little bit. But you'll also notice there are mods that are very overpowered, usually towards the end of your artifact. And this artifact, you get leveled up by basically leveling up your season pass and getting more XP. Now, these only last for specific seasons. So if you do want to use some of these in the build, which you can, you'll notice a lot of the best ones are class item mods. Um, some of them fit in the different um, other uh, different pieces of armor, but a lot of them, the best ones are the, uh, the class item mods. You'll just have to level this up and keep in mind again, 
that build you will only be able to use that season now some of these come back so for instance in the particular season we'll talk about this, we have Sundering Glare. Sundering Glare was here like a, maybe probably a year, year and a half ago. So again, some of these do come back, so you can potentially use them. But these mods come from, again, the artifact itself. In addition to this, you'll also notice that when we were looking at mods, that not only did you have combat style, and again, I in a different video, I will go over what Charge of Light and all those different things mean. You also have Legacy and Raid mods. Obviously, Leg Legacy mods you can't get anymore. Um, but your raid mods, those are ones tied to specific activities in a raid. So you'll notice here that this particular raid is Foul Disciple Raid Mod. The, these mods can only be used and slotted within raid armor, and they can only be active within the raid. And they usually give you bonuses to specific raids, so they are really good to get. If you want to build into things to help you do extra damage or survive longer in a raid, you'll want to get these. These you get by completing activities and getting secret chests within raids. So when it comes to mods, really, again, we talked about we talked about a lot of the general ones are just for resilience, discipline, things like that. Your other mods then, outside of things like, again, Charge of Light and things like that, a lot of them are about finding, you know, you have ammo finders, things that allow you to, to basically, when you kill something, you have a higher chance of getting ammo of particular types. Like I have a side, sidearm and I want to get ammo. That's usually, you know, one way you do that, and then you'll make sure you get ammo out of it. There's targeting things, things that allow you to be better at targeting with specific am with specific guns. There's other things that help you regen your abilities, whether it's gain, like this one, gain super energy and grenade kills, you know, grenade gain super energy on melee kills. Again, things that help you regen your abilities. Those are usually good. There's also these siphon mods. The siphon mods specifically are mods that depending, let's say arc siphon, let's say I get kills with final blows, rapid ones with an arc weapon, well then I'll get orbs. Orbs would then could potentially build into your build, but also help you regen your super faster. On your arms, typically again, you're gonna have a few general mods, things like, you know, this is causing damage of a melee attack or reduce your grenade kill. And, and you notice it, the sort of the thing around messing and allowing your abilities to come back quicker. You have loaders, which allow you to reload weapons faster. You have dexterity mods, which allow you to uh, basically allow you to ready and stow speed for certain types of, amp, of weapons faster, right? Um, on your chest pieces, there's a lot of things around resistance. So you'll get things that have Concussive Adapter, for instance, will allow you to reduce any area of effect of weapon damage coming in. Arc Resistance, if you have arc, arc type damage coming in, it'll, reserve, it'll help you with that. So Reserves will allow you, let's say you pick up a, let's say you're doing rocket launchers. When you pick up a brick, it's going to allow you to have more capacity to get more ammo on each of those bricks that you pick up, right? You have aiming mods, which help you with aims at different weapons. On your legs, again, other things that help you with your ability regens. Scavengers, which allow you to get bonus reserves when picking up ammo. Again, you see the theme here. Holster, which allow you to have things reload while things are holstered, right? And then your class, obviously we talked about the, the sort of uh, seasonal mods, but a lot of these are around getting things out of either finishers you know, like finishers heal you requires one tenth of your super energy, right? Finishers restore melee abilities requires one sixth of your super energy, right? So your class item is really a lot of these are kind of general sort of all ability regen sort of mods. And again, your stuff from your seasonal artifact are going to go into this for the best mods for each seasonal artifact. And then, like I said, we'll go into later in a future uh, video about Charger Flight, War Mind Cells, and Elemental Well Mods. Those are all mods that allow you to do sort of your end game sort of mods. And then obviously your raid ones, which I talked about earlier, right? These are specifically suited for. So now we're done talking about that. Let's talk about a little bit more detail how the pieces of armor work with particular mods. So for instance, we already talked about about each piece of armor has has let's say a number of energy slots that you can use, and that's determined of basically what you can use there based on how many points each of those mods take. So if you have ten energy, you can put at most 10, 10 points worth of mods into that particular piece of armor. The other thing you'll notice is that they have an affinity, whether it's arc, void, 
stasis, or solar. You can change this really quickly by taking all the, all the mods you have currently equipped using an art upgrade module in Glimmer to upgrade those, right, to change it. So for instance, Powerful Friends. Powerful Friends is an arc mod, right? You'll see some of these don't require this one. This general armor mod doesn't require an affinity. This one does. Now this gives you some really cool perks so you might want to use on some builds. So you will specifically have to have an arc piece of armor. You can do this by either going in and having a piece of armor again for each burn, or you can go in here and change this over time, right? So that again is something you have to pay attention to depending on how you spec your build out. The other thing you're gonna notice is that some mods only fit into certain types of armor. So for instance, this mod here for protecting you from different types of damage only works in chest armor. So it's only gonna work in chest armor. So that means you gotta have chest armor for this. There are mods, especially around the seasonal track, that are for specific for the class item. So the class item tends to get very crowded with very nice, but also expensive. Look at this, this mod takes seven points, which means you can't do a lot else with this piece of armor. But again, there's some piece of armor that only will work in certain types of armor. So again, that's one of the things to think through when you're doing a build is you wanna think about what am I doing? What, what activity am I trying to do? And what am I, what's my goals and what am I trying to help with? So for instance, you know, if I'm in some end game PVE content, I wanna make sure my resilience is high, but maybe I'll sacrifice some other things to get my resilience high, right? Maybe I have to put some resilience mods in, right? So maybe I'll have to do that. Um, the, this mod, for instance, is hands-on. This gains bonus super energy and melee kills. This build that I have on right now is specifically designed around melee kills. So I would put this on because I know I'm going to do a lot of melee kills and that allow me to get super energy, which will allow me to get my super back quicker. So again, that's really the basics on how builds work. Typically, you're going to want to take a particular exotic around a theme. So for instance, this particular exotic is 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 themed around melee and so then once you're you're doing that then you take the rest of your build things either make sure you have enough resilience or other stats to allow you to survive in something like you're doing like that and then you add in other mods that build on top of that to accomplish a goal that's really the purpose and then you would go in over here and pick weapons that support whatever goal you're trying to do like i said I'll have other videos on here to kind of walk you through some of the more advanced portions of build crafting, but these are the basics. Now, the very important thing you're gonna also wanna do is to get these stats up. You'll notice that this particular piece of armor, when I look at it at here, has 89 points. Now, 12 of those points are for master working, so that takes us down to 77. Right, these 77 points, you'll see the master working looks like the little little extra two points per area, the little yellow, that's what that is. But the 77 points are the total of all the other white areas there, which again, totals 89 total with the extra master working. That's how many points that I add to stats. You see people talking about triple 100 stats. And what they're talking about is, you'll see here, I have 89 here, 82 here. I could tweak the armor and my mods a little bit to get both of these 100, and that helps get your stats regenerated. Now, I'll tell you, the triple 100 is overrated. Really, you want as many stats as possible to have fairly decent numbers, right? That's what you want. Once you start getting to 8, 9, that's usually okay. Getting that little extra will give you a little bit of an extra boost, but it's not really that necessary. Though Most of that armor, to get that, again, that's what you're going to want to do. You want to not have, you know, really not good armor. You want to have most of your armor that comes to you being at base before you master work it's somewhere in the 60s. So the other piece of that when it comes to armor is obviously, as we talked about earlier, you're going to want to get things that come in at base at length in the 60s, right? Once something's over 60, you typically know that it's got some decent stats and you want stuff that's spiky. So for instance, you know this, I have high resilience and high intellect on this one. That will allow me, if I'm trying to do a build, okay, I need some high resilience, high intellect that sacrifices some areas, but I know it'll cover those areas, right? And so maybe I have another piece that's, this one's high resilience and high strength, right? Depending on what I'm trying to do the build, I keep a couple pieces of armor like this around so I can kind of mi mix and match those. Most of those pieces of armor, the best places to get them, obviously you can do raids and GMs and things like that, but that's really end game activities. 
Typically on a seasonal pass, you'll have a couple opportunities to get stuff out of the seasonal pass. The other thing you're going to have is a seasonal activity will typically have places where you can focus Umbral Ingrams and do it in a way where you get more end game armor. Those are probably the things that I would focus on is looking for anything that says, hey, you get high stats when you go to this activity. Those are the things I'm going to look at. It's going to vary season to season, but usually the seasonal activity once you come to the helm, first off, getting stuff from the seasonal activity will give you some of that. But once you go to the helm and you focus Ingrams, again, you usually have to unlock some unlocks on the seasonal activity to do this. There will be ones where you can get that end game sort of armor. And that's really it, guys. I will probably do another video where I go over, again, more of how things like uh, Charge of Light and things like that work. But I wanted to give you a very basic video that walked you through, okay, here are the stats, here's the armor, here's how you want how you want your armor statted, here's the burn you're gonna need an armor, and here's how the different pieces of armor work together, and then again, here are the mods. All right, guys, that's really the video. Hope this really helped. Um, if it did, like I said, I'm gonna continue to start putting these videos out. Let me know if this is too much detail, not enough detail. Uh, but again, these videos I'm gonna specifically use to help you understand the basics of how to do a build and do it correctly. And then I'll start putting out some more advanced guides that'll help you understanding how to do things like Charge of Light and, and those types of things to build those really cool builds that you see on this channel already. That's the video. If you liked it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.